Hello, in this video, I'll talk about lactose operon. Now, what is an operon? So, simply we can think of operon is a set of genes controlled by a single promoter. Let's say we have a promoter marked here in black, and this gene 1, 2, 3, and 4 is under the control of the same promoter. That means expression of all these genes are dependent on this unified promoter then this kind of arrangement or this kind of mechanism of gene expression is known as a operon system. Simply, lactose operon would be used to produce the genes that are required for lactose metabolism in E. coli. So, and all these genes, by the name, we can understand that all these genes would be under a control of single promoter. Before we go to the details of it, Let's just simply try to understand what does LAC operon does. So let's say you like rice. Simply like you, the E. coli, the preferred food is or the preferred nutrient source is glucose. Now, if you give if you are having a choice between rice and chapati, and a bacteria having a choice between glucose and lactose, you would definitely choose rice and the bacteria would choose glucose. Simple. Now, bacteria would choose glucose when there is an option. Let's say in the environment, there is no option to get glucose at that moment. So, lactose is only an alternative food at that situation. So, in order to perform lactose metabolism, lac operon genes need to be turned on such that lactose could be also metabolized to get necessary energy sources. And that is all about lac operon. Clearly, we can understand that lac operon is not activated all the time because bacteria prefers glucose over lactose and bacteria uses glucose as a primary nutrient source, not lactose. So, all the time, bacteria don't need the genes to metabolize lactose. So, the default state of this operon is off. But it is an inducible operon. That means in presence of lactose, the lac operon genes are turned on and the necessary enzymes required for lactose metabolisms are uh, produced. So clearly, lac operon is an inducible operon. Now, let's just take a look at the genes that are under the lac operon. So we have lac Z. LAC Y and LAC A under a common promoter. Now the LAC Z gene give rise to beta galactosidase, whereas LAC Y gene give rise to lactose permease and LAC A genes give rise to galactosidase transacetylase. Now the LAC Y gene product permease is important to bring in lactose. Even if Lactose is not present in the in the media. Huge amount of glucose is present. Some amount of transcription from these genes always happen, and thereby few permease enzymes or few beta galactosidases would be there. So the permease brings in lactose from the environment, and this lactose could be broken down into glucose and galactose. More simpler form and which is easy to digest for the bacteria. And this happens by the action of the enzyme beta-galactosidase, which is a product of LAC-Z gene. Now, lactose could also be converted to an isomer form, which is known as allolactose. And that could be also triggered by the enzyme beta-galactosidase. We would look at, in the subsequent part, that what are the important role that beta galactosidase permease etc play on this before that let's just look at few critical situations now let's say in the environment only glucose is present so it's a favorite food of e coli so definitely it doesn't need to metabolize lactose or doesn't even need to think of metabolism metabolizing lactose so we can expect that lac operon is off but how it is off so the lactose operon, upstream to the lactose operon, there is another gene which is under a control of separate promoter known as LAC-I. Now the LAC-I gene 
product is basically a lac repressor. Now, in absence of glucose, lac repressor can bind to the operator region of the lac operon and don't allow the polymerase to bind to the promoter. As a result, none of the lac operon genes could be transcribed. And it makes sense because in presence of glucose, the bacteria don't need to think of lactose breaking down. So, it would utilize glucose as our primary nutrient source, not thinking of lactose. So, the operon status in presence of glucose is off. Think about a situation where there is only lactose present. Glucose is not available in the environment. Then what happens is that lactose, which is getting, in, which is getting inside the bacterial cell, is converted to allolactose by the, by the activity of the enzyme beta-galactosidase, which is a lac -Z gene product. Now, allolactose would inhibit the lac repressor. As a result, lac repressor cannot bind to the operator region and cannot suppress it. As a result, RNA polymerase can bind and give rise to transcription of the lac operon genes and thereby Beta galactosidase, parmiase, and galactoside transacylase, all these necessary lactose metabolizing products would be produced. But this regulation is not so straightforward. It the complexity is added at the level of another important molecule, which is known as catabolite activator protein, which is a cyclic AMP dependent protein. So, whenever there is glucose, cyclic AMP level is low. Now, when cyclic AMP level is low, catabolite activator protein is inactive. And at the same time, you have to understand that in pre presence of glucose, lac repressor is active. Lac repressor would bind to the uh, operator region and don't allow the RNA polymerase to bind. And also, for optimum recruitment of the RNA polymerase, cat cat catabolite activator protein or CAP is essential. So when CAP activity is low, optimally the RNA polymerase cannot be recruited into the lac promoter. Now think of a situation when only lactose is present. Then first of all, our lac repressor is suppressed. At the same time, since we have less glucose, cyclic AMP is high and the catabolite activator protein is activated. So it can optimally recruit RNA polymerase and as a result, lac uh, operon is turned on. Now let's come to a complicated situation. In the environment, both glucose and lactose is present. And this is, sim this is similar to the example that I've given you, that you like both rice and you like rice but you have option of both rice and chapati so definitely you would prefer rice and you would eat rice then if the bacteria has option of glucose and lactose bacteria would prefer glucose but how does it happen at a molecular level so at this situation we we can understand when lactose is present lactose is converted into allolactose and as a result, the lac repressor is inhibited. But at the same time, when so lac repressor is inhibited, now theoretically, now RNA polymerase is free to interact with the promoter and transcribe the genes. But at the same time, what happens is glucose level is high, so cyclic AMP level is low. As a result, catabolite activator protein is not that active, and it cannot optimally recruit. It cannot optimally recruit RNA polymerase into the promoter. As a result, the transcription from the lac operon genes does not occur. So also in presence of glucose and lactose, when both are present, lac operon genes are turned off. They remain in a dormant state and glucose is used as the principal nutrient for metabolism. And this phenomena is known as catabolite repression. Simply, it means whenever you have simple nutrients, use the simple, simple nutrients and don't bother to break down complex nutrients to make further simple, simple nutrient. 
So glucose is way more simpler than the lactose. That's why bacteria would readily prefer glucose over lactose even both are present in the media. So that concludes the video on lactose operon. I hope this video was informative and if you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.